I'm going to show you how to do a really, really beautiful human eye. Now what I've done here, I've already done this one. That's already finished. And this is the one I'm going to be doing. And what you'll be able to do is to compare the two as I go along. And you'll be amazed at how many pencils I've used. It's something like 19 pencils I've used to create this. And also the surround. Now to save time, and because it's the eye that I'm focusing on, I've already completed some of the background. I should complete this more. As you can see, there's a lot more depth in here. So that will be done as we go along. But to start off with, we are going to use the white pencil to establish the light in the eye. A sharp pencil. A little bit of white in there. A bit of white in there. You want to work from light to dark, so we're, we're working on the, the lighter colours first. And then I shall complete this eye. Now there's a little bit of light in there as well, we might as well do that while we're about it. Now all these dark lines you see will all be hidden. Except possibly for that one there. Let me just show you what we do with that. Now, I don't want to remove it altogether, but I do want to lighten it. This, this, you can see, if you look at this eye, you can see that there's a line in there, but it's not that strong. And I haven't worried about the lines over here because they'll be hidden by the darker colours. But this one, I've, I've really got to remove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go... If, you've got, if you have got one of these, it's a good idea to try to get hold of one. They're double-ended pencil erasers. Now, as I say, I don't want to remove the line altogether, but I just want to remove, fade it a little bit more. That should do it. We go in with white again. And then I'll build up the surround and give you some idea of how this was done. I'll use a little bit of pink in there, first of all. And then there's a little, this is a, it's 187 in the Faber-Castell range. But uh, if you're not using Faber-Castell pencil, you get an equivalent colour. It's a, a reddish ochre. Okay, and then I'm going to use an ivory there. Ivory in the Faber range is a brilliant colour because it's, it's, it's a good blender too. And you can see I haven't blended that at all with anything other than a pencil. Now let's just close in on this and then you can see what I was getting at earlier on. You see? Now we've got a... We've lost the dark line. Okay, that's so far so good. Now inside the eye here, I'm going to put a little bit of ivory. Now the idea of this is to, is to set this... this area in motion. And we want to put the light in. You see the light running all the way around there, what it does here too. Now this eye is, is ochery with a touch of green in it, so I should be using a little bit of blue as well. Okay, now we want to establish now the, the, the edges of the eye, and I'm doing that with a grey. I'm going to be I'm being very careful here as you can see because I want to make sure I took a lot of care when I was drawing this out originally so I want to make sure that I've got that as a good shape. That's good isn't it? Now inside there we do the same thing. You see we don't want anything too light in there otherwise the dark colours I'm going to be putting on there wouldn't show up. Just stop there for a minute. Now you can see all the time keep comparing. Now the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of shading in the eye. Very, very, very light touch. I'm holding the pencil really lightly there just to put just a little colour, a little tone in. That's fine. That's it. 
Okay, now I'm going to use now a little bit of pink. That pink that I used just a second ago, which is a light pink. It's one through two in the favour range, but any light pink would would work the same way. You've got a little bit of pink in there too. That's great. Now, at the end of the corner, I'm going to also put some pink. Great. Now, I'm going to now use, this is 187 in the Faber range, but it's that colour that I used earlier on, just to put a bit of tone in here. And we go over the line that I'd established with the drawing. So we've now lost the dark line, and it comes down here. And when you get to there, we shape around, and at the same time, put just a little touch of colour in there to deepen it. Just a, again, still smidgen of colour. And we come out from there. Now here, we don't want to be too strong. I don't want a line like that. So I'm kind of very, very lightly touching it. Now we can go over this several times. The wonderful thing about the pastel pencils is you're able to keep adding to it. And the other line here already established this, or started to, with the same colour. If you're interested, I'm going to be doing another section of this picture uh, with the nose, how to shape the nose. And uh, you'll be seeing how all of this colour is built up there. But we're concentrating on the eye at the moment. Now, down here we're going to effectively just bring that down. And that's going to be very, very dark in this, this edge eventually. But we've got to kind of like pave the way. Now, compare it once again. It's starting to look good. Now, in here, I'm just going to put just a little touch of this same colour. It's a good idea to try and bring the colours. Like I've got ivory in here, I've got it in there, I've got grey in here, although you, won't, you don't see it, but there's grey in the skin as well. It's a good idea to keep the colours quiet for a moment because I had to concentrate on that bit. Yes, to keep the colours compatible. Okay, that's great. Now we need really to, to, to make a bit of movement now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use ochre in the eye. Now do you see, in, when you do this you start to lose the light in the eye. So always be mindful of that and bring it back so that we keep the shape. Now you can see once again we really are beginning to get some sort of shape in there aren't we? Now I'm going to use a blue. Now this is a dark blue and I'm going to use a blue just to go around the outside of the edge of this eye. That's on top of the grey. Actually quite dark as you can see there. There we are. Beginning to come alive, isn't it? I'm also going to put a bit a little bit of this colour, same colour inside the eye. You can see actually, if you can see there, you can see a little bit of the tone. Very, very light touch, hardly touching the paper at all, just creating that edge. And the other thing I'm going to be doing here, this is a lighter blue, I want to put a little bit of blue into the ochre. Now, you know that yellow and blue make green, and this is where we will we'll start to get our greeny look with the eye. It's what I've got round here. Bring that back over the top of there. That's going to be much darker than that eventually. That's great. Now, while I've got this blue in my hand, I also want to put just a little bit of blue in the eye, just just a touch, like that. And then I want to add a little bit of pink, that same pink we've used before. So the pink and the blue give you a very nice sort of mauve tone, like that. Now that's too light, so what we do now, or too light dark, so what we do is bring it back with our white and 
we've still got the colour there but what we want to do is to make this section here very light as you can see here and we can do this several times not just once now that's great that's really working well but we really now need to darken the colour now what I'm going to use is a, a colour burnt sienna it's 183 and we put a little bit of the brown in This is the colour that you see there. Well, not quite because I'm using oranges as well in, the, in, in a minute. But you can see how the build, the build up is coming along. Now, this same colour can be used as a strengthening agent to this. These, these edges here and also the eye. Now, you see how much stronger now that's becoming. And we'll bring that back over here. Now while we're here, I'm just to break off for a moment, I'm going to show you the eyelash. Now what I did, the eyebrow, sorry. Now what I did there to start with is I put a bit of pink on and then I put a little list of this 187. Like that. So that's, that brought us up to date. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the same colour I've just used here to try and create the effect of light. I'm not being too strong at the moment, I'm just playing with it. I mean, I've already done it, so I know how much strength to put in. You work the colours so that you effectively produce the eye. Now, there's a bit of shadow, you can just see it there. So, what we do then is to use our 187 on the edge. And then I've got a colour kind of shaper. This is a great tool. You can use a paper blender, but the colour shapers are better. Just to put that shadow in. Now, having done that, we can now bring the eye brow not quite up to the edge, so we get a little shadow there, which is rather straight. Don't worry about here. This is all going to be um, done at a later stage. I'm going to show another demonstration on hair and how to do it. But we are focusing on the eyes in the stem. Now that can now. Now what we're going to do now is I want to bring this down a little further. Oh, I need to put some strength in now. This is where we can start building our strength up. From there, also from here. Because I've put the dark colour in, you can see we can afford now to be a little bit more ambitious with our one eight seven or ready brown. See how that builds up now? Nice. Okay, that's fine. And just to smooth it off, we just bring in the colour shaper again. The reason this is blending so well is because we have colour underneath, like I've showed you down here. So that really blends nicely. If it's too dark, which it is a little bit, then we can easily come in back in with our lighter colours. There is a good example. There's another with our white with our white and we use a white and we just give ourselves a little bulbous area there. And we can do that inside here too that we show you again. How that works. Darken it down. It wouldn't work if we hadn't put that dark colour in there, but now we've got that in there. It gives us the opportunity to mould. That's what I'm doing, moulding the eye. In fact, we'll come all the way along around here now. With it. Because this is going to be this area that you can see over there. strength at that point. Now the eye really is taking shape but you can see how much further we've got to go. But this is coming along really well. 
Now just there, where we have, um, so let me just show you how we can actually mould. It's sometimes a good idea, because we're using all the similar colours, just to break off and do just a little bit of, of area around the skin. I mean, you could do the eye on its own if you want, just on its own, but I think it's rather nice to have a little bit of interest and or framework for the eye to sit into. That looks good. Now I want to just now this time I'm only going to blend lightly. I don't want to push too strong. I want to blend it in but I don't want to be too ambitious with it. Good. That's looking good. Okay now we can bring back colours like the ivory. Let's just move that up there a little bit. Just a little. We don't want to make it too light in there. That's probably just enough for the moment. Nice and soft. And just there, we can, just here, we can put some more white in. As I've showed you up here, put a little bit more in there as well. You can see how the eye is developing now. Now this same colour can be put in to use as a shape, shaping tool. Let me show you how that works. I want to come into there. You can see that that's this area over here. And then a little bit more pressure. Suddenly we have a little more shape to the eye. All right, good. Now we need to darken the area at the top of the eye, at the top of the pupil. So I'm going to use the 183 just to darken that down a little more. Bear in mind we're really still waiting for the time when we can put the eyelashes on. And that's not very far away, folks. But you can see how that now one bit leads to another. Now here we've got to make that a little darker too, so we can come in with our strength there. That's looking good. Now just down here, you can see that's a little darker, so we can put just a touch of that, but not too much. We don't want to put too much of that on, just a little bit. And then we can use our previous colour, 187, just to blend that so we get a little... That's it. Excellent. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring you a little closer now so you can see as I finish this eyeball and then we can pull back again and you'll see how much like that one it actually is. I'm going to start this by strengthening the outside edge of the pupil. Now I'm using 181, which is Payne's Grey. Now you've got to be very careful with this because, as I said before when I was doing it, you've got to make sure you get the shape right. That looks pretty good to me. Now what I want to do is I want to just sl slightly interfere with the inside edge of that. So it's not quite such a round, hard circle. Okay, if that's okay up there, it's fine. And we go up, go, got to think about that pupil disappearing up into, under the eyelid there. Okay, so we just put that like that. Yep. Great, okay, now we'll also at the same time use a little bit of black. Now black is a devastating colour but it's a fantastic colour to use. It just pushes the colour, it just darkens it a little more and all I'm doing is going on the very outside edge of that. And it really does jump alive now. Now just in case we have strayed with our dark colours, we just put a 
little bit of white to crystallize that edge. You don't have to do this, but really, it's it's um, it just a bit more impact. And I like people when they look at these and go, "Wow, isn't that good?" Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is using the burnt sienna, and I'm going to put in some. You can see it here, actually, can't you? It's a little bit bigger than I need it at the moment, but we'll be closing in on that the other colours. And then I'm going to put a little bit of black in, just as I did round the outside of that, in the very central area, avoiding the pupil for the time, the light in the other for the time being. Now I don't want this to drop too far down. That's far enough. Now we have the impact. Okay, let me just make sure it's a little darker there. I want to make it a little darker at the top and what I'm going to use is actually what we call a 175. It's a very dark brown sepia colour. I didn't want black and the burnt sienna that I was using earlier, which I'm going to carry on using in a minute, is not dark enough. So I chose, and you could choose a very dark brown, that would work as well. Okay, that's fine. For the moment we've got that. Now in between the two we have some really interesting colours. Now what we can't do with a human eye, we can't actually make it exactly the same. So what we've got to do is we've got to create a illusion. So we just spot it like that. And you can see that's really looking quite spectacular now. Still colours to go though. I'm using an orange. This is 109. And then just a little touch of 113. You think, well, gosh, that's not making any difference. But it is, you know, folks. It's just giving a little, a little bit of brightness to the eye. Now that's very good. Now I'm going to use a little bit of blue as well. Now, the blue is really only really to try to make the green. Now, I don't want to put green on the eye. So I'm, I'm going to use the blue, which is 140 in this particular case. I'm using blue. And I'm then using the ochre, which when mixed with blue, gives us a greeny hue, which gives us the colour that I'm looking for there. Now, that's superb. You may not think at the moment, but when I pull back on this, You'll see it. Now we've got to darken it just a little more. And I'm going to go in with the blue that I used before, which is actually 157. This is quite a dark blue. And just push the close in a little bit. Much like I did earlier. You saw me do that earlier. I'm doing it again. Pushing the edge, making sure we don't go on the outside. Now that is absolutely fab fabulous. That's really coming along live. I just want to put... I'm going to put a little bit of red if I can find this blue. This is 118. What are you doing that for? God, it's purely effect. Now, I haven't put it in this one yet, so oh, you can't see that. Let me just move it across, folks, and you'll be able to see me do that as well. I, this is something I would have done later, but I thought I'd do it now. A little bit of red in there as well, just at the top. It just gives that little extra. As you can see, if I come back onto this one again. Stunning. Now, if we look at the other eye just for the moment, you can see we've got some shadows in that eye. We haven't done it in that one, but we're going to, folks. I'm going to use the same colour. I've just uh, used 140, and I'm going to put the 140 in here. And what it is, it's uh, the pupil. You're actually looking at the pupil through the light. I hope that makes sense to you, folks. Same on this side, just, just a touch on that. Like that. That looks stunning. Now, just to make absolutely sure, let me just show you what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to use this is the burnt sienna which we used before, and I want to just make sure those lights are crisp on the edge. 
because I'm now going in with yet another colour. This one, oh, I've got the wrong one. Now this is uh, a charcoal white. Now you don't have to use this, we can use the 101 if you like, if you haven't got one of these. But this is um, quite spectacular because it gives us it's just a little bit of brightness which we don't have with the 101. We just go in on the edge and we get that lovely crisp. Okay, that's one. And this one, just a little bit. A very small area we're doing there, but that is stunning. That looks great. Okay, now I'm going to pull back and we'll complete the, the two eyes together. Now we've got to start thinking about here now. So I'm going to start with the a sharpened burnt sienna, which is a colour we've used all the way along. And I'm coming down here just to make it a little darker then. I don't want to make it any more dark. I think, I think I've got that dark enough. And then coming here as well in the same way. Just come into there. Okay, so I don't think we need too much more, just a touch there. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to use a little bit of red. This is the red I used in the eye earlier on, just here. It's ready to go. Now we're ready really for the eyelashes now. Now these are quite hard to do because we're, 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 I've got a, a sharp-ish. 283 this is and really you know, to go too mad here I think I just you see I've stopped when I got to there and I think that's probably very wise just to finish off underneath there what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a grey and just sort of smudge it you see how effective that can be now, what about the eyelashes at the bottom? You see, on here we've got more. Well, same idea really. Just flick them in. I don't put as many as is shown on photograph. I kind of restrict that a little bit. But look at those two eyes. I think they are stunning.